In this video, I'll explain the use of the opening menu and the controls so that you can play the golf croquet game. In the opening menu, the first choice you have is whether you wish to load a previous game. You can have saved up to five games and you can open game uh, any of those that you choose from. Uh, you have choice of the accuracy of the playing sh in the shooting uh, from A class to C class, where C class is twice as an accurate as A class and B class is midway between those. You can choose whether you want to play a level game or a handicap game by toggling between these buttons. You can choose, and this is quite good for novices, for the computer to show you the hoop distance. You can change the lawn speed from fast 13 plumbers to slow at 8 plumbers. You can choose the, the hoop spacing, hoop size, um, from garden width through to championship width. Uh, I'll leave it at tournament width for handicap, and you can choose the rigidity of the hoop in the ground, from soft to hard, hard being much harder to play. At that point, you, having selected those, you can start the game. First player will choose to play blue, and when clicking on blue, it will start the ball from the colour. So these are the choice for each colour. So choose blue, it will select the ball from the carrier and place it in the corner. You can then uh, select a mallet, and by using these two arrow buttons, you can move the mallet around the ball to change the direction of the shot. You can use the up and down buttons in order to adjust the viewpoint, which can be quite useful because you can align the top of the handle with your target, a ball, and that improves the accuracy. These outer arrow buttons allow you to change the view without changing the position of the mallet relative to the ball. And then you can zoom in and zoom out with those buttons. You can then click on this to open the mallet and a stop shot button when clicked on stops any follow through from the mallet, which can be useful when playing handed shots near hoops. The T, if you hover it over, gives you a top view of the whole court. Um, that's just hovered over. If you on it, you can zoom in while over the T button. Alternatively, if you want to go to permanently to the top view, you can click on the top view button, which give a view which includes all four balls. And again, you can zoom in and out on that and you can return to the eye view. Down here, we have the button to shoot. And here we have buttons to choose the length of shot. Now, at the moment, it's showing 21.7. That's because we asked it to show the distance to the hoop. And that's the distance to the hoop. So we can change that. Now, this button, if you click on it with your left mouse button, the number will increase by 10. If you click with the right button, it will decrease by 10. If you use the scroll wheel, you can scroll up and down. So we'll go back to 21. And you can similarly scroll the decimal. That's a tenth of a yard. We shoot now. The ball will be seen to travel approximately 21.5 yards, running over to the hoop. Over here on the left hand side, shot error in ball width at 10 yards, 2.93 R, equals its 2.93 ball diameters to the right of the correct alignment. So that gives you an indication of how far it's gone offline. Here we have L, C and R. They really only apply when you're trying to line up a ball to run a hoop, but they give a view, a low down view of the ball. C is through the center of the ball, L is to the left and R is the right. If we swing that view around to look at the mallet, at the hoop, get a better understanding of what the difference is, L, C and R. Moving to the top, uh, we have these buttons, which are numbered for each of the hoop. These give a close-up view of each hoop. And also a view of the east boundary and the west boundary spot points, where balls will be returned if uh, they are offside. Up here, we have the score. Blue and black will score uh, here and red and yellow there. These buttons will change in color to the color of the ball which run the hoop or if it's a yellow ball, it will turn red. It will only be red or blue. And here we have bisques. The bisque was selected, then the number of bisques will be added. Go to corrections, 
and choose to be handicap game, that will allow us to add some bisques for each side or whatever the arrangement is. At the top, step forward and step back. You can step back to a previous shot. It's only used uh, when there's an error. You should not step forward and back frequently because it can introduce errors in itself. The save button will allow you to save the game in which you'd be asked to enter the name of the players and the date and time will add it automatically. And close application, if you click on that, then you get a confirm yes or no you wish to close or open the application or, or keep the application running. Turning now to the tabs on the left hand side, the first is the guide. If you click on that, the guide becomes visible. There are 11 pages to the guide. You can hover over them to see each page or click on them to hold on that page while you read it. There are also links to the Croquet Association. First link is to a synopsis of the game and the second link is to the basic golf croquet rules. And to turn this off, click the guide again. Then under options, there are four options. The first is Mallet Clash. And when the game is played normally, the mallet clash is ticked and it prevents you from placing the mallet in the position where it would clash with a hoop or another ball. If, however, you turn this off, that clash is not no longer prevented, so you have to be careful how you position the mallet. And you can also use these buttons to nudge the mallet. You can see that, that is moving the mallet to the left and to the right uh, to possibly assist with clearing a hoop wire or something like that while playing a shot. We'll turn that to put the mallet clash back on. Short swings, if you click that, that will reduce the swing backswing to one third of the standard swing. Next item in the options is flags. If you tick flags, then the corner flags will disappear. If you untick them, they'll reappear. This allows you to play shots when a flag may cause you problems. Final option is show hoop distance. At the beginning of the game, you could have chosen to show hoop distance. If you tick this box now, it will show the hoop distance and it's shown in the shoot distances when you click on a ball, uh, a fresh ball, it will show that. And then there are options for corrections. You can correct to have a handicap game if you choose to. If you click on that, then the options will arrive so you can add those. If you Find that there's a problem with the score. Sometimes the computer fails to correct the score or get the score right. By clicking on this, you can have the option to change the scores. You can cancel a score, you can change a score, or you can enter a new hoop score. And finally, very occasionally, the balls will not be returned to the position adjacent to the boundary. And if that occurs, by clicking on this then the all balls will be brought that are outside the law boundary will be brought to the boundary. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the game.